Hi, I'm Lee Iridium. The Iridiots are here. It's all killer time. How are you doing, guys? <laughs> all right, good to be here. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I know. Great. It seems like it's been ages. I think it's because I it miss does. you. I miss you guys, even if it's like a day. Uh -huh. I know. Okay. It's like it's terrible. Terrible. I, uh -huh. I, I don't know what I'm going to do when this ends, but um, I'm sure we can think of something. I know. I think it's going to be weird, isn't it? I don't know. It's going to be too weird. much longer either. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. But you know, for the moment, we're at 2007, guys. If anyone doesn't know the rules of the game, or a game, I suppose, or the se this series. We've got to 2007. We've worked our way from 1980, didn't we? Was it 1980? We did. Yeah, 80, fuck. we started, yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. So we're up to 2007. <laughs> what this is, we choose our best tracks or our favourite tracks from that year, but there's a few twists to it. It's not as uh, simple as that. Um, we've got 12 tracks to talk about, um, and there's a couple of rules. We can only choose one track per album, if you like, and the track listing has to match the original track listing of the album, CD, whatever the fuck it is. And um, yeah, it's getting better. But 2007 is great. Yeah, I think I think there's better to come. But 2007 for me is very good, very good indeed. Yeah, and for me, yeah. so um, in 2007, that's an odd number, which means Dominic, the oddest person here out of all three of us, has to start. <laughs> yeah, I wear that badge proud. Okay, uh, number one, I'm going to open up with Rush. Mm -hmm. Rush is on their 18th album. Wow. Snakes and Arrows. This is the second yep. to last album. Um, so the beginning of the end. But mm -hmm. it's kind of a rebirth for them, which is kind of strange. Um, <laughs> they got this new producer um, for this and then the next album um, who kind of stripped everything down. You know, they through the 80s and the 90s, they became a bit lighter, used a lot more keyboards, weren't quite as heavy as they were in the earlier days this guy um he had produced Foo Fighters and Coheed and Cambria and a couple other bands but didn't have a whole lot under his belt but met these guys and I guess they got along well and the fans went crazy for this and the next album just because it was like they had rocked like they had rocked in a very long time um just just three-piece rock music you know there's no intricate keyboard parts and stuff you know they, they they really turned it up a notch so it's good uh this is the first song uh called far cry and it was yeah. the first single off there as well so um yeah it, it really um as far as their fans man they couldn't have been happier with this uh outcome so and it is a pretty great album but both of these this and the next one are quite good so uh yeah far cry rush snakes and arrows Excellent. very cool very cool cheers cool. man well, you got in jam. What's your opening track, mate? Okay, my opening track is actually one you've done a reaction to. Oh. Um, you didn't like it that much. Didn't like bits of it, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my suggestion. It wasn't my suggestion. Oh. Song, but um, it's Annihilator. And oh, yeah. Clown Parade from the album Metal. Um, I, as you know, I'm a big fan of the Annihilator, but mm. I, I like the early albums, and I like from now onwards they just they released some great albums. Like the middle period, not so much. I haven't really had anything from them for a while, but this album was sort of back to back to basics, if you like. Um, but they just, I think they're just re-releasing it again this year, and they've done some re revamped versions of the songs mm. and stuff like that with some special guests. But anyway, Clown Parade is the open track, very fast, very classic Annihilator. Um, great guitar guitars on this, and uh, just a very uplifting opening track from a for a very very good album. Yeah. yeah, I remember. I remember listening to. It. I remember there was some. I don't know. It was a, It was heavy, but you know, different sort of waves. Maybe punk. A little bit punky. Was it? I don't know. I can't remember what I, I can't remember what I said now. But yeah, they're re-releasing it. I think they re-released a song with Stu Block, X Di for mm. uh, X Di Surf in it as well. So yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah, I do I like it. Thought of you today, Jam, because I was. I had my iTunes on shuffle and. Craig LaFell's cover of Alice in Hell came on, and I wondered if you had ever heard that because I really like it. <laughs> no, no, I've never heard the song, but I've not heard that version. Though. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, check it out. <laughs> yeah, I like Annihilator. Though. I think they're good. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, very good. Very band. good. Yeah, cool. So, um, good one, Jam. So, I'm going to a classic band. Been around a few years now. Must be fifty odd years, I reckon. Scorpions. Huh? Got to be fifty odd years, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, they're pretty good album, actually. 
um, of the newer stuff. They bought Humanity Hour One out um, this year, in 2007. And the opening track was called Hour One. Um, quite heavy, really. The opening riff is almost, I don't know if it's down tuned. I don't know, but it sounds almost like a sort of newer, a lot of Metallica type riff opening this one up. Mm. Um, not old, we're not talking martial puppets or anything, we're talking Metallica later on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, a really good rocking track on a very good album, actually, really solid. I think excellent solo, by the way. I listened to it again today. Um, and the solo was just fantastic, but Matthias Jabs is good, isn't he? He's a fucking brilliant guitarist, but um, yeah, I don't, don't know what the old hour one was about. I thought there was going to be like a another album two and three and <laughs> yeah I don't, i'm not sure exactly what that's about whether they did have that in their minds and then they changed their mind i don't know but um it's a very good scorpions album altogether but hour one is the opening track it's a really good rocking track so there you go scorpions on form oh. okay right. done but the scorps the scorps are back yeah. the germans okay um my number two is uh pink cream 69 this is mm. uh, their 10th album called Intensity. Yes. I know this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, uh, the track I picked is No Way Out. Um, and uh, this was their 10th album, but it's the 20th anniversary of the band. So I guess they've been doing an album every two years, if you do the math. Um, this is their first on Frontiers Records. Mm. So kind of a new um, era for them on this one. And a really great album, really good. Uh, just solid melodic hard rock, just yeah. straight up the way the way I like it. So um, yeah, if you've never heard Pink Cream '69, uh, this is as good a place to start as any. Um, and they're still going now, so check them out if you haven't if you haven't heard them. Um, good good band, doing, yeah. doing very well, doing nice. very good stuff. Very good choice, man. Very cool. All right, we got in Jen. Okay, talking of um, some older ones, I'm going to Ozzy mm -hmm. um, from his album Black Rain. I think this might be the last one that Zach Wilde was on until he, I think it's on the new album they're just about to release, but I think this is the last one he played on because I don't think he's been on the last few, has he? Uh, but this is Black Rain. Yeah, obviously it's uh, like the last few Ozzy albums, they're hit and miss. Uh, not, not, not my favourite album by any means, but this song, I Don't Want to Stop, is one of the one of the highlights of it, uh, very catchy, very single, or one of the first um, singles off it, I think, and it's got the trademark Zach Wild pinch harmonics in there, and uh, just a great yeah. song. <laughs> uh, what was the odd one? <laughs> very cool, very cool. Bit of Aussie man, that's very cool indeed. Right, so when I was on my list, I was trying to, a bit like you guys, if something new comes up, or that, you know, I'm trying to get some new bands in there that I haven't included. So um, someone gave me a reaction uh, to do a few years and this the release came out five or six years and a band called Metallium I did mm -hmm. it the other week I really love the song actually so I noticed when I was going through the releases from 2007 they bought an album out so I thought I'll give it a little you know listen to try and get a track off it uh, yeah, very cool indeed this is a song called Spirits um, the album's called Nothing to Undo Chapter 6 and it's their sixth album they actually do chapters every time um Really cool song, medium to fast paced, heavy chugging sort of metal track, really. Um, they're really good on the guitar as well. So I just they're a German band. Mm. Well, was it a German band? Sorry. That's what it says in Wik on Wiki, because I had a little read up. Oh. They were, uh, they were, were a German band. So um mm. yeah, so I don't know if they'll be included mm. again. They might do, but I thought I'd get some fresh blood in there for me choices because i've got loads of choices the stuff i knew of i just thought i'd try and get yeah. some new stuff in there so yeah. metallium spirits great track check it out who would okay. you kind of who would you kind of compare it to i mean is it is it power metal-y or is it, it, it uh, the ones i heard are not but I believe they are a little bit like that but i i've the ones i the one i heard the first track i heard was quite a a sort of slow to medium paced heavy metal number basically you want to love that oh, right, great okay. and this this is a bit faster but not in that power metal you know doo -doo 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 -doo, kick drums and yeah fucking, yeah it's not nothing so, like that kind of like primal fear or something maybe 
Maybe, but maybe a little bit more power metal than them. I don't know. But um, okay. vocals are a lot different. It ain't like a Halford copy or anything. It's quite classic metal sort of voice. So, okay. Very cool indeed, Metallium. Sure. Yeah. So there you okay. go. Oh. Tra- All right. Track three, guys. What you got, Dom? Track three. What do I got? I've got The Return of Lizzie Borden. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Album Appointment with Death. Track I picked is Live Forever. Sixth album. First one in seven years. Um, yeah, this was a this was a very strong album. I heard it when it came out. Um, I was like, wow, he's he's really still got it, you know. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, you know, it just again, he just doesn't seem to um, really appeal to that many people. He don't know why. No. Um, he just, you know, he's got a great voice and mm. the songs are great. Um, you know, kind of a heavy met uh, more of a heavy metal alice cooper kind of feel i guess is is mm. kind of a way to put it you know it's a bit theatrical but um i don't know I, he's just kind of found his niche and i really like it so um yeah if you didn't know that he had an album out in 2007 check out the point with death it's quite good mm. yeah man he's good i love lizzie Borden, man i mean the, mm. the couple of albums in the 80s were just especially visual lies were just fucking amazing you know and I could never understand because he, he had that voice. I suppose you could have compared him a little bit to Bruce Dickinson slightly. I suppose yeah. he could have the same kind stuff. of vibrato and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Great voice. But um, maybe yeah, it's because right. he doesn't tour that I don't know if I don't know about America, but I've never heard of him playing over here. I've never heard of ever seen him on a lineup of Download or Donington or anything like that. Mm. So maybe just, maybe that's why they're not big because they're not they don't really promote it over here. Don't know. And then yeah. and then and then sort of bands, the smaller ones are probably less and less on the on the festivals front as well, and yeah. yeah, you know, it's getting heavier and heavier. A lot of these festivals, isn't it? It seems. There you go. Okay, great choice, though, man. Love Lizzie Borden. Right, we got in Jam. Okay, um, similar thing to last list. I've got a few of my favourite songs by the artists on here. This is my favourite Machine Head song um, from their arguably their best album. A lot of people say it's their best album for the Blackening, and it's Aesthetics of Hate which is an uh, absolutely barnstorming song. Really, really heavy, really fast at the start. Um, and it's just obviously full of anger and spit and, you know, everything you want from a metal song. But at the end, it goes all slow and talk doomy at the end of the song when it gets, it's quite a long song, about seven minutes. But if you haven't heard Aesthetics of Hate, it's definitely one. If you're feeling in a bit, you want to get some anger out, have a listen to that. Um, <laughs> great songs on the black and in. Uh, now I Lay Thee Down is a great song. Halo is, well, would have been my other choice if I didn't put this one there, but um, yeah, Halo is a fantastic song. But uh, Aesthetics of Hate from Machine Head, probably lead their best song, in my opinion. Mm. Wow. Very cool. Very heavy by the sounds of it. Okay. Yeah, at the start. Yeah, at the start. Okay, so um, I'm going to Yawny. Yawny. Right. Yawny's going to make, his, buddy. Yawny's gonna make <laughs> an appearance. So not only is he going to make an appearance, he's going to make a cover appearance. So, uh, Yorni did Unlock in the Past album. Um, he had another one later on, actually. This is the first one. And this is a cover of that brilliant song in the first place. I mean, I'm not saying it's better because it's such a fucking good song, but Yorni definitely done it justice. Cold Sweat, Thin Lizzy. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Just, just, just brilliant. Obviously, he's got a, he hasn't got the same voice, obviously, as Phil Liner. You know, Phil Liner. I love Phil Liner's voice, but obviously, Yawny's got that fucking Dio, but he puts everything that into it. But power, it just, yeah. Oh yeah, but it just, it just, it's just brilliant. It's got loads of energy. The guitars are ramped up to fucking eleven. It's just brilliant. <laughs> it's just brilliant. So Yawny, Cold Sweat. It's fucking excellent. Excellent song. He does. He does have some amazing covers. He really does. I usually Even, prefer it when he does the, you know, chooses a pop song or and then beefs yeah, it. Yeah, the, the the non rock songs, but 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 yeah. even like the the hard rock songs that he chooses, as you say, they do take it up a notch. You know, oh, I yeah. mean, like, yeah, Thin Lizzy was always hard rock, but they certainly weren't, you know, metal. No, but no. but in his hands, it just they just turn it up and just get some Fucking real kind of energy in it. You know, it's always good. Definitely, mate. Cold Sweat is an excellent version of the Thin Lizzy song if no one's heard awesome. it. So there you go. Okay. Track sure. four, guys. What you got, Dom? Oh, track four, I've got Trouble. 
This is mm. the last album with Eric Wagner before he left the band. The album is called Simple Mind Condition. It's their seventh album. And the track I picked is Pictures of Life. Um, I think I might, I don't know. There's some Plastic Green Mind are kind of, I, I like them both. They're not quite up there with Manic Frustration and um, and the self-titled one, the, the two Deaf American albums, those are my two favorite. But uh, they they did continue with some good stuff. And, and this is good as well. Um, They've only had one album since this with their newer singer, um, who I don't, I don't know. I mean, he's not a bad singer. I just, mm -hmm. Eric really had a really distinctive voice. And um, the other guy just kind of has just kind of a standard blustery rock voice. Mm -hmm. Just isn't, I don't know, it doesn't really fit. I, if they get some new material, I'll definitely check it out. But anyway, uh, for the time being, here you go. Uh, Eric, we know, died um, earlier this year. Um, so I wanted to get this in because it is the last record that he was on. So there you go. Trouble. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Cheers, mate. Good. Brilliant choice. Where you got in, Jam? Okay. Um, I've got another one that you did reaction to. I did, I did suggest this ah. one this time, and you didn't like this one either. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, well, it's a band of much maligned, Who is much it? maligned band. I don't know why. Uh, I think they're a bit paint by numbers, supposedly, paint by metal numbers. I don't know. I like him and I don't mind saying I like him. I, I think they get a lot of stick. They're a lot better than some other bands that people Nickelback. think are absolutely fantastic. Sorry? Nickelback. You got it. No, it's not Nickelback, no. <laughs> it's Five Figure Death Punch. Oh, Five Figure yeah. Death Punch. Yeah. With the bleeding from uh, their debut album, Where the Fist. I mean, it's, it's, I guess it's metal core. They're, they're not quite as heavy as they were in the first few albums. This is their debut album. They're, they're perhaps a little bit soft now. And I can sort of people see why people don't like them now. But they started off pretty heavy. And there's a lot, there's a bit of screaming in this, which is why you didn't like the song, I don't think, because there's <laughs> soft bits and screaming bits. But the you're bleeding trying, is a. You're trying to get me like that screaming when you're, you're just trying, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, just, just, yeah, just like I think you're turning. But uh, no, it's a great song. Great album, um, and I say I don't mind admitting I like Five Finger Death Punch. I don't think they deserve the stick they get. It's got some fantastic songs, some really good catchy stuff as well. But uh, yeah, they get a bit of stick. But yeah, the Bat bleeding is a really good heavy song and worth listening if you've ever heard it. Vamp likes them. Can you? Hear him? Yeah. Oh yeah, Vamp. Yeah, yeah. Vamp. Oh, yeah. yeah, he likes Five Finger Death Punch. Yeah, that's good. Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here he is. Hello. There he is. Hello, come and say hello to everybody. There you go. Hello, Bam. The, the fourth member of All Killer, No Filler. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Right, okay, so thanks for that anyway, Jam. Sorry about the reaction, by the way. All right. Um, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I love Yawny, don't I? We're talking about Yawn Londay, by the way, in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> so I, I haven't actually said it yet. So um, on this year as well, there was the second release of the Alan Londay project, which was the Revenge album. Um, and if anyone doesn't know, this is Russell Allen, who's just a brilliant vocalist, and Yawny Londay. Um, and they get together with... Magnus Coulson from Primal Fear. Um, they've done it three or four times now. Um, this is the second album, like I said. So this is a song, this is a, a power ballad, I suppose, if you like, but it gets quite heavy. And it's probably my favourite song of the Alan Londe projects altogether. It's a song called Master of Sorrow. And it's just fucking brilliant. It is just an amazing, epic ballad. Um, and of course, the guys are really on form. It's brilliant songwriting by by Magnus Carlson. And I don't, is there a little um symphonic bit at the beginning? I can't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably, but it's a brilliant ballad. It's got loads of feeling in it, and it's just um, you know, I did mention that these projects, you know, it's a bit much sometimes now. You do get quite a bit of them, but this was when it was very cool. <laughs> to have a project <laughs> um yeah these these three guys together are amazing so adam londe master of sorrow check it out it's fucking brilliant there you go okay yawny's made right. the second appearance in yeah. a row so as well is there a, a master row. plan album this year as well <laughs> yeah there was actually but he was out of the band 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Too much going on. He was too busy, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, too much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Number five is one of my kind of left field choices. I have I've had a few in the past few years. Bands that are definitely rock bands, but they don't really fit the metal thing. But anyway, that this band was really huge for me at the time. Um and this came up, so I just put it on here. The band's called Thrice. Um, been around for a long time. Um, I don't know how to describe them. I guess they're alternative I hard I've rock. The, I I've guess. heard some of these. I've heard some of these mm. songs. Yeah, from these guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, they. I know how much you love your kind of epic ballads, Lee. And this is kind of their version. They have a few songs that just absolutely just kill me. This in the heart stab kill me um and this is one of them it's called brenda fleet um it's from their album the alchemy index um i haven't loved everything they've ever done but man when they hit on this kind of slow they're not well i guess they're ballads but they're heavy especially mm. when they hit the chorus man oh man i can't tell you uh so anyway thrice burn the fleet um I still follow them. They broke up for a few years, but now they're back together and are releasing records quite frequently. And they're good, but I just haven't heard anything in the last few years that compared to some of these records around the mid 2000s. And this is one of them, Burn the Fleet off of Alchemy Index. So I might be way, I might be way out here with the sort of genre of music it is, but would they be anything like, because um, I can remember hearing them, you know that band Funeral for a Friend? Are they that sort of, you know that yeah. band, didn't you? Would you put them yeah, in that sort of category? They could definitely tour with them and it wouldn't be uncomfortable, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've heard some of theirs and I don't mind. I never used to mind some of them. I don't know what I'd think of it now because I've heard them for years. But I can remember right. I can remember getting into Funeral for a Friend and I think some Fry stuff as well way back when. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Thrice, when they first started, they were a lot, you know, they, they, they had a bit of screaming and stuff, as mm -hmm. they all do. And yeah. then by the third or fourth album, they've <laughs> all these bands drop that. Yeah. And then they start writing, like, really fucking amazing, you know, deep songs. Um, and this mm -hmm. is this is one of them. So, yeah. Very I cool. highly recommend this track. I love it. Good choice, mate. Thank you very much oh. for that. Cheers. All right, Jam, what you got, mate? Okay, I've got um, I've got a debut band. Um, I don't know if you call them a super group or not, but it's um, Hell Yeah, which is obviously Vinnie mm. Paul from Pantera and Damage Plan, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, on drums. And uh, I think the singer was I don't know his name, but I think he's from Mudvayne, I believe. Um, mm. Is the singer? Um, I don't know who else is in the band. So I'm going to call them super group. I don't know, but Hell Yeah. I mean, they tried to they weren't trying to cash in on any of that. They wanted to go out on their own way. They're very heavy. The first album's very heavy. They sort of. I guess they're sort of going where Damage Plan was going, so the Pantera, that sort of riffage. But um, they've got a bit of a country feel on some of the songs. And the, the song I picked, uh, so the debut album, sorry, is just called Hell Yeah. Uh, the song is called Alcohol, Alcohol in Arse. And it's, um, yeah, got a country feel to this one. This is probably the less hev least heavy song on the album, but it's just got a great vibe to it. And it's just, yeah, you'd like this, Lee, if you haven't heard it. It's got a very country sort of southern vibe bit of rock to it um and the, hell yeah i've saw multiple times i was lucky enough to see him download a few times but i saw him at rock city as well just being up close with Vinnie paul was brilliant on the drums and it wasn't long before he died actually to be honest because mm -hmm. they've done i think they did about five albums i did quite a lot actually in the end oh, wow. and uh, obviously this is the debut so uh, yeah very lucky to, to see him quite a lot and they were very very good live and uh, i'm sure they will feature again in the list but if you haven't heard them check it out hell yeah and alcohol in arse I'm glad. I'm glad Alcohol you made. Alcohol and ass. Yeah, I like. I like the. Oh, yeah, sounds that. better in American. <laughs> I'm glad you said uh, southern after you said country, because people yeah. take it the wrong way, don't they? Yeah, sorry, country. yeah country. They they think it's all about your dog, your missus no. leaving and your dog dying, don't they? When you say country. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, not quite that. No. <laughs> and if, uh, if someone said to me the other day, and I, I I reacted to a song or something, and then I said about the southern elements in this song. And then someone said, "What makes it southern?" And then I could oh, <laughs> wow. I, I what couldn't a loaded question. I couldn't mm. answer, but it's just a feeling, isn't it? It's, you know, it's just what yeah. makes what makes any song sound. Any, you know, you always have to say it sounds like something. Yeah, but I don't know what what does make a song southern. I, I don't know. Well, it sounds like the Skinners. 
<laughs> if it might be a metal Leonard Skinner. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> good choice though, mate. Very good. Get a bit of Ooh. Southern metal in there. So even though I'm not having your knee again, oh. I'm, <laughs> it is a bit of a link to the last song though. So I've got three in a row that are a bit linked here. So this is Primal, Primal Fear. Fear. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, but I'm not sure if Magnus Coulson was with him then because he was in and out. I think Magnus Coulson might have. This could have been the first album he was on, but I'm probably way out there because it. Mm. they definitely sounded different on this album. This was this album is called New Religion, and they sort of experimented a bit more, I suppose, in that epic more epic sort of sounding whereas before they were straight up sort of metal you know um right. but this is a song called fight in the darkness which is the obvious one for me to have off of it it's an epic ballad <laughs> 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 it's brilliant though it's absolutely brilliant and obviously ralph my favorite vocalist of all time sheepers is on there um he's been on all of them he, he just sounds fantastic on this but it's a, it's a it's a pretty good album. I didn't. The album itself, I think they're better when they just do metal myself. So the album mm. was pretty good, but it just went a little bit off what they was. And then the next album, which I might mention on another year, they went back, stripped the metal back down and really gave it to you hard, you know. But it's still a good album. But Fight in the Darkness is a brilliant <laughs> sort of epic symphonic type ballad. There you go. Does it? Do, do all the songs start with some sort of symphonic thing? Because that, that's the way we can figure out yes. whether if you were on the album or not. Every song. Every song. <laughs> all right. So chances are. <laughs> I think I think Magnus Coulson might have joined at this point. Yeah. yeah. They, they, yeah. <laughs> but they have gone more heavier after that, though, you know, and dropped mm. some of that symphonic stuff that he, like, that he loves. Mm. I used to think it was like, you know, when I was too stupid to know, I used to think, fucking hell, man. You know, I mean, he spends some money on though, getting that orchestra in, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah. You we all know. It was like a 50 it's piece just, orchestra. And we, we just know it's just a bit of that and it didn't make anything sound like <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Still good, though. Anyway, so Primal Fear, Find the Darkness from New Religion. There you go. Right. Okay. Okay. So I've got. Um, I kind of rejigged the list just because uh, this is kind of pertinent to this last week or two. I can't remember. I think it was this week. Um, Turbo Negro, I have back on here. Mm. Um, Retox is the album, and it's their seventh album. It was the single released off of it. The name of the song is Do You Do You Dig Destruction. This album went to number two in Norway and number three in Sweden. So we're not talking about some underground band. Oh. This band sold records. They were very popular. But this was the last album with their singer, Hank, who died um, about a week ago. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. He had yeah. been doing some other bands since he left the band. Um, but he had he had a lot of demons. They had broken up for about five years, a um, few albums before this. So there was a period where they weren't together when he, I think he had a heroin addiction and then he was, might even been committed for a while. He had some mental health issues. And so he, he had a tough go of it. Um, I don't know what he died of. Um, no. It may just be years of mm, abuse of various drugs and whatever mm. i i don't think it was suicide that i've heard but anyway so he passed um just a few days ago so i want to get this because this was the last album that he was on i do like the new singer i think he's kind of continued i don't think the fans have really fully embraced him because this singer was kind of the focal point of the band so um they have continued without him when he left the band but Mm. Um, I think it's, I think a lot of fans kind of think it's just kind of watered down without him. Mm. Um, and now he's gone, so there won't be any reunion, but, uh, yeah, Turbo Nega Retox, um, it's good party rock and roll, man. It's, uh, it's great if you're not familiar with them, um, <clears> this is <throat> as, as good a place to start as any. Cool. Cheers, mate. Rest cool. in peace to the singer as well. Rest I in mean, peace, Hank. Yep, definitely. Um, okay. Good one, mate. What you got then, Jam? 
Uh, yeah, we're not doing too well for uh, past people, are we? Obviously, a video call from <laughs> Hell Yeah, and now, uh, now Linkin Park I'm going with, and obviously right. uh, yeah. Chester. Um, this is from Midnight to Midnight, which is their third album, um, produced by Rick Rubin, I believe. I didn't uh, I only read that. I didn't know he'd actually done one of their albums, but apparently he did mm. do this one. Didn't know that. Anyway, um, the song is What I've Done, which is a bit of a, it's not a ballad, but it's a bit of a slow one. It starts off with a piano and a keyboard, and it was one of their big hits, I think, off mm. this album. It was a bit, It was more of a stripped back to basics album, this one, rather than, it wasn't so much sort of mixing and, you know, rapping in it, that sort of thing. It was more like a straight ahead rock album. And the album after this was absolutely terrible. Well, I suppose it's completely different. It might be pretty good, but there's nothing that I liked anyway. But uh, this is quite a good album, and this song, What I've Done, is, um, is a great track off it. And uh, yeah, I think it was the lead single as well. There you go. Linkin funny, Park, what I've done. It's funny with Linkin Park. When they brought that second album out, you know, I love the first album, but I got a bit sick of it. I overplayed it a little bit. I think a hybrid theory. Uh, everyone played it. And um, yeah. and I, I sort of was, when they brought the second album out, it felt like a copy near enough of the first album. And I got the ump with that. Wanted them to do something different. And then they done something and then they started doing some stuff completely different. I didn't like that either. So I'm one of them, you know, never happy people, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> you probably like this one. If you haven't heard this album, you probably like this one. I think so I have. Strip, strip I, think, I think I have heard that one. Um, but yeah, but I mean, but I think by that time, I just heard so much of Linkin Park when they first pulled the album yeah. out. I was just like, fucking hell, you know, I heard that too much. Anyway, good one, mate. Um, yeah. Okay, my track six is Crash Diet. Mm, so yeah. these are a great Swedish. They were more sleaze when they first started, a sleazy band. Um, glam, if you like, I suppose. Um, this album was called um, The Unattractive Revolution. This song was called Alone. It's a ballad. <laughs> it's, a dark, <laughs> it's very dark, though, quite heavy. It's actually got Mick Mars guesting on mm. it as well. Really? Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, does a great solo, like a wah wah solo in it. Um, now, we're talking about deaths and stuff like that. I mean, I didn't know the, the history of this band as well. Apparently, they've had a lot of bad luck. Um, I think mm. their singer, it could have been the singer on this album, died as well, not long mm. after. I think maybe a couple of albums. And they've had all sorts of bad luck going on. But um, I wanted to give them a plug as well because they've got a brilliant song they brought out for the album in early part of next year and they sound on fire they really do it's the best probably the best song i've ever heard them do so oh, they, wow. you know so um yeah they, i mean they changed their sound a bit they can sort of seem to have completely dropped the sleazy sound and gone for more of a yeah i, I wasn't too thrilled with the last album but i haven't heard this new single for it yeah know. It, it's fucking brilliant so yeah the rust i quite like rust the last one but yeah i know what you mm. mean it was um i like the earlier stuff because you know i'm a, I'm a sleaze magnet <laughs> yeah yeah you are yeah i know what it sounds like they completely dropped it on this next song whether the album has or not i don't know but um Crash Diet alone. Um, I mean, I, I like some of the later albums as well, so they're probably going to get on the lists. But this was this was a great song. So check this out. Bit of you like a bit of glam alone by Crash Diet. Okay, brilliant. What you got in? All right, track seven. Okay, we're back. Sorry, eight more like. Sorry, no, it's track seven. Oh, <laughs> seven. Track seven. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, halfway man. there. Halfway there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're back to one of my favorite bands of all time. This is the Cult. Their album is called Born Into This, their eighth album. Um, mm. The track I picked is Illuminated. Oh, God, what a song this is. This album is weird, you know. It, it was their first on an independent label. Well, it was on Roadrunner. I guess they're independent. Um, after years of being on Warner Brothers and stuff. And they they had the misfortune of they, they released the worst song on the album as the single. And this album just died to death. It just... <laughs> no one no one seemed to listen to it um no one talks about it they don't do any songs off of it and i think it's brilliant you know a lot of people talk about the one before this which was their quote-unquote reunion album between good and evil which had a couple radio hits and stuff on it which i thought was all right but i mean this one i just thought blew it out of the water it does sound a bit different it does they do sound it, it's kind of a rebirth for them they're kind of they're not quite um you know how the cult kind of had their sound, you know, mm. this, um, this, this is bringing in some, some new sounds and, uh, but this sounded fresh and, and really into it and lots of energy. And I fucking love this album born into <laughs> this. So 
Uh, if you like the cult and you haven't heard this record just because it was not independent and didn't get a lot of airplay or whatever, I highly recommend it, especially this song, Illuminated. Oh, God, I love it. So, uh, <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, I saw them on this tour. They were great. Um, yeah. Just a bad so choice. Cult- you got to choose a good single, man. The first song's got to yeah, be, exactly. it's, got, it's got to get people fucking interested. Otherwise, you could Yeah, fuck it well, especially, I mean, you know, the, the internet was, you know, is, it was quite popular. It's probably not as big as it is now where like, people release, you know, all these singles before the record comes out mm. and stuff that kind of build up. This mm. was more just, you know, release one song to radio and that was it. Um, and it's just, unfortunately, I, I don't mind the song, but compared to the other songs on the record, it just, it's not up to par. And it's a bit, it's called Dirty Little rock star, So it's a bit, I don't know, mm-hmm. it's k- kind of jokey, I guess. Um, yeah, so it didn't do it any favors, but rest of the record's great so it's yeah. interesting Highly interesting recommend. really interesting what you said there about the releasing singles now if, if a no, band no, if you, a, you can get half the record now before the album comes out yeah. <laughs> and if a band releases a single after the album's out it just this just doesn't seem interest what it's just that well, we've we've heard the album now yeah just, you're well, you're absolutely right yeah, yeah. Well, bands in the 80s they used to just gain momentum yeah. all the way through and releasing singles just to get more album sales and well, yeah look at look at hysteria i mean over half those tracks were were hits yeah amazing <laughs> it? and it sold for two years you know and there's yeah. just not that kind of longevity anymore but oh well we're sounding like old men now so let's stop <laughs> <laughs> cool good one mate what you got in jam Okay, um, track seven was the only one I struggled on actually, so um, I wasn't sure what to pick, and um, I went for I've got a cover version in the end. I've gone to it's an album actually we talked about on our covers covers show we did, um, and it's Queen's Reich with their take cover album. There's a lot of good songs in it. I've heard a few things said about this album that isn't very good, but I thought it did brilliant brilliant stuff on it. Um, uh, the song I've gone with is Near Nights, which is obviously Black Sabbath, so it's a classic. Um, wow, is it? This is even faster, if possible, than the original Black Sabbath version, seems to me anyway. And it's done it's done really well. It's pretty much by the book cover version. There's nothing different about it, obviously. You're not gonna better Dio singing, are you? But yeah. uh, you know, Jeff Tate's a good singer. Pop's not so good at this point, but uh, no, but it's um, it's some good stuff on there. I mean they attempt to do Welcome to the Machine, which is very brave, and they do it really, really well, which I think, yeah, the Pink Floyd song and Bullet the Blue Sky great U2 song, they've done really well as well. So it's worth checking out. I mean, Queen's Rikers we know aren't up new Queen's Rike are good, but the, the old Queen's Rike before they got rid of Jeff Tate, not so good. But this album is definitely mm. worth listening to if you like uh, some classic cover versions. And Neil Knight's is uh, one of the better ones. I think probably by the, mm. this point as well, the shit that they've released before it, people yeah. probably, probably wouldn't even give it a chance, even if it was good at that no. stage, would they? Because thinking, well, well I have never heard it. <laughs> oh, neither have I. Neither have I. And I, I'm a, they're one of my favourite bands now, you know, but I've never gone back yeah. and listened to to that i can remember hearing the one with the fucking ears on the front of the album what was that here in the now frontier was it that, yeah that one yeah, yeah and then i was like what the fuck is this and then listening to something another one a few years later and thinking it ain't got no better you know something about soldier wasn't there wasn't it? yeah um, the american soldier one that's yeah. it yeah and just describe and q2k and yeah. got the list was on and on <laughs> Fucking hell, yeah. But, you know, anyway, <laughs> they're all right now. So, um, okay, this next band, I sort of put this, them and the band I spoke before, sort of hand in hand really, a little bit, really. So Crash Diet was the one before. This is Crazy Licks. Oh, yeah. Um, another great... Even Swed- coming up. Yeah, another great <laughs> Swedish band. These guys are going really strong now, actually. Bought an album out this year, which is great as well. Um, but these were a bit more glammy as well when they first started out um yeah this is called heroes are forever and from the loud minority debut album um it's just rocking 80s glam and they're proud of it as well even now they're bringing out and they they sing about the 80s and it's just brilliant you know they just they don't give a fuck they're, <laughs> they're not they're not, not saying no no we don't sound like an 80s band they're saying let's bring it back you know what i mean so that's cool yeah. so um crazy looks great band um, Heroes are forever. I mean, they've, they've got stronger and stronger, in my opinion. That their albums now are fantastic, but um, this was still good. So, Heroes are forever from Loud Minority. There you go. That's my track seven. 
Okay, okay. we're seeing Sweden coming up in the <laughs> we are. We are. in the ranks, definitely 2007. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus. oh, yeah. Because my number eight yeah. <laughs> drum roll is Hardcore Superstar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yet another Swedish mm. glam rock influence band. This was actually the first one that I owned. Mm. Um, uh, so I, I, I've had it since 2007. Um, I've gone back and listened to some of the earlier ones. And of course, I've gotten everything since. But this is actually the first one that I had on CD. Mm. Um, it's called Dreaming in a Casket. It's their sixth album, believe it or not. <laughs> um, and this song is called This is for the Mentally Damaged. This is for the mentally damaged. <laughs> they're just a great <laughs> band. You know, they're just, mm. you know, uh, I can't really compare them to one specific like glam metal band, but they just have that thing. They've got the toughness of like later mm. Motley Crue, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, it's it, it's still a 2007 band. They're not being completely uh, retro. You know, I mean, it's still it's got it's got that punch in the production, you know, like a modern rock record would. Um, yeah, I got, I can't, got can't me. Really recommend them. I got me. I've only heard two of their songs, to say truth. And that, that's the two new ones that are on the new album next year. They're fucking brilliant, and they're really dark as well. They're like a dark glam sort of metal. You've got think, uh, you've got a lot to. Yeah, <laughs> no, no to fuck listen. off, no way, I can't do it. The new album would be fine. <laughs> but, um, I think actually, I think Jam would like them because they've got a real yes, heaviness about them. They've got a real heaviness about them as well. You know. Darkness. Yeah, I mean, they're just a they're fantastic classic classic rock and roll band you know they're just great and i saw them live as well they're fantastic so Ooh. um yeah so here we go that's the start of the i think 2007 the launch pad for all these, yeah. all these. <laughs> sweden takes over you know it does so yeah. there you go hard hardcore superstar man if you guys haven't heard them out there this is the this is my first album and i i would say still one of my favorites streaming in the casket so Very there good. you go cheers mike thanks for that okay jam okay. Good, mate. Well, I wonder whether they're going to have the same song here. I mean, you might have avoided it on purpose, but um, it's Alter Bridge and Blackbird, the title track from their second album, and it's probably their best song, my favourite song, Alter Bridge. It's an epic. I mean, obviously, Alter Bridge aren't known for doing epic songs. This one's epic for them. It's seven or eight minutes long. It's got absolutely fantastic guitar so it's got motion it's got everything it's not not really a ballad it's a power ballad or anything but it's, it's still heavy at the same time very heavy in places and it's just a fantastic song if you've never heard blackbird by Alter bridge and miles as kennedy's singing is fantastic on this as well i actually saw him at the weekend which was quite good but he didn't play this um and yeah blackbird title track from Alter bridge's second album some great songs on this album ties that binds Come to Life and Rise Today are all earlier tracks I can mention. And there's another one, but I won't mention that just in case Lee's got it. But uh, brilliant album, brilliant song. Blackbird by Alter yes, Bridge. Mate. Yeah, we got a match on that one, mate. Yeah. Brilliant song. I've seen them play it live countless times. Yeah. It, it's just fucking brilliant. Almost the Sabbathy riff, that one that comes when it goes heavy at the beginning. When it goes, yeah. That goes through the chorus, obviously. But eight minutes of just brilliance. Absolutely yeah. epic brilliance. But... um. Yeah, it's just a little bit more for me. It's Miles Kennedy's friend that passed away. That's what it's about. I mean, they are, they've got a lot of songs about people that pass away. Yeah. <laughs> they're very, <laughs> they're very um, emotional, some of their songs, but this is just, uh, and also it won Best Guitar Solo um, ah. in Guitar Magazine, which is a big fucking, you know, it's one mm. of the biggest magazines. And it was voted by everyone as the best guitar solo ever. Oh, ever? Oh, right. Yeah. I ever. For the year. Jeez. Ever. Wow. <laughs> You're dumb, look. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and to tell you the truth, it is fucking brilliant. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, you just watch, when you watch it live, like I've got, I think I've got every DVD that they've done, you know, live. Yeah. And it just fucking blows your mind every time you hear it. You know, it's just... Yeah. Anyway, Waterbridge Blackbird. I think that's my favourite song of Waterbridge as well. So there you go. Oh, wow. Look at you two. Jeez. Oh, no. like a love fest, isn't it? <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not like it, that it's uh, that it's an odd year and I'm not in the middle. So you don't have to wait for me to give my number <laughs> eight. So you guys can just match right after each other. That's great. 
<laughs> anyway, brilliant choice, Jan, by the way. Excellent. Thank you. So, um, right, track nine, guys. What you got then, Dom? Okay, track nine. I've got a band that, uh, this is another one of those albums that I just stumbled upon somewhere. I don't even remember where. The, the band name is called Sturm und Drang, which yes. is kind of a old, um, I don't know, I think it's maybe has something to do with Wagner and old classical music, Sturm, Sturm und Drang or something. Anyway, so um, I, if I had this and I like it and I picked it, uh, the debut album is called Learning to Rock. This song is called Mortals. Really great, you know, melodic hard rock or what, what have you. But I was, I was looking it up today and I didn't realize that this is their debut album. They were only 16 years old. Yeah, this yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. Yeah, I, I know, couldn't yeah. believe it. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, they're a great band. I've got, I love this. I had this written down to, to get a song off of. It's just the way the list was. Oh, good. Out that I didn't oh, choose one. Yeah. Yeah they, yeah, they only have three records in a kind of a short space of time. So they've been they've been gone for a while. I think they broke up quite a while ago. Um, they only had three records. But um, yeah, uh, just incredible that they're so young. I really had no idea. You'd never guess, listen to it. It just sounds like professional, you know, yeah. rock and roll. Um, and this one went to number one. Uh, they're, they're a Finnish band. This one went to number three in Finland. So they sold mm. some records there as well. They weren't, you know, they weren't under the radar. The singers, um, their singer went away for years and he's with a band now that is one of the biggest Frontiers bands uh, called One Desire. They're sort of in Oh, that. I didn't know he was in that. Yeah, they're in that sort of eclipse sort of. Yeah, I've got one of their records. Yeah, yeah, he's a singer. I don't know yeah. if it's the same guy. Cool. Mm. Mm. He sounds a bit different because I, I think he's that... broken. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fifteen years later, I guess he probably would sound a bit different. I, I think he had a bit more of an accent back then. I don't know if you've noticed it on that album. He's got a little bit of an accent, yeah. but he sort of dropped that a little bit now um, as he's got older. So. So yeah, but a good, yeah, great, great choice, mate. It's very guitar driven that album. Loads of heavy, yeah, stuff on it. very cool indeed. Yeah, it's really great. Who knew? Okay, <laughs> all right, Jam, what you got there, mate? Okay, let's go to the other side of the world, and we're going to Australia, and we're yeah. going with Airborne, which is mm. a photocopy of ACDC, isn't it? Really, let's face it. But um, still good, still a lot of energy. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen Airborne live. I saw them when oh, yeah, they yeah. actually. This is their, this is their Running Wild. Is their, it's not their debut album. They actually did sort of release an independent album, but it's their first one on a sort of a proper label, if you like. So a lot of people mm. didn't hear about them until this album came out. So it's called Running Wild. Um, and I saw him, at, I think it probably downloaded again. And it was, this is when they were first out. And the singer is mad. He's brilliant. Jesse, something O'Keefe, I think his name is. And he's just mental. And he's climbing up on the rafters, you know, and hanging for the lighting and drinking beers and smashing them on his head. Um, <laughs> just, just, Great, like you know, typical Australian, you know, necky, necky beers, and uh, he's, he's not quite so. Yeah, I've seen him a few times since, he's not quite as crazy now. In fact, there's another quick story they were at Rock City, and I don't know if you've been to Rock City, but there's some some steps either side of the stage, sort of on the on the standing bit where you stand, the steps either side, and there's a doorway, and he's running around in the crowd with his guitar, you know, and he runs up these steps, and it's, it's a door that's not open and he gets so he's thinking he could go through it it's locked and he sort of stops that's <laughs> <laughs> <Bloody hilarious. Brilliant. laughs> but, uh, yeah so sorry, I, I digress anyway this song's called cheap wine and cheaper women and it's a typical acdc airborne rocking pumping song that's going to get you up and going there's nothing deep and meaningful in any of their songs but it's just they're a good band they're, yeah they, they've almost more do better songs than acdc these days now you know because obviously they said to get a bit old but uh yeah it's a good song cheap wine and cheap uh, cheap wine and cheaper women airborne from their sort of debut album running wild there you go yeah they're more of the um they're more of the bond scott era acdc i would yeah. say and they've got that yeah. raw energy about them yeah definitely yes yeah. okay good one mate um well i had to get you know i always have to please mark I've, I've got to do it somehow so um i'm going to do it now so a band called cornerstone oh yeah a song called wicked from an album called two towels of one tomorrow it's the fourth album doogie doogie is it going to be Tony Martin? Is it going to be Doogie? Ooh. We don't know. Nah, it's Doogie, <laughs> man. So this is classic rock. <laughs> classic rock, a bit chuggy. Um, 
I think it's about a witch. I was trying to listen to the lyrics. It's, it's, mm. Yeah, we like a witch song, don't we? You know, what I mean, oh, it's yeah. good. Isn't it? So, um, I went into scary. the woods, and there she was. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, Marker, after obviously, correct me if I'm wrong. He'll probably know this one. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Cornerstone, Wicked, the Two Tales of One Tomorrow, just classic. You know, in the vein of Rainbow Rock, really. But Doogie, 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 Doogie. doogie. Okay, there you go. Cornerstone. That's, that's, my, <laughs> that's my number nine. Right, track 10, guys. What you got? Doogie. Uh, okay, track 10 is, um, well, it's kind of a super group, I guess. This was, they, they weren't around for a while. They were only around for, I think, about a year, but they did make a record. Uh, this is called Circus Diablo. Oh, yeah. Uh, this came out of, um, there was this thing in LA called Camp Freddy, which was like a weeknightly, um, I don't know if it was the whiskey or something. I remember always seeing Camp Freddy. It's one of those things where musicians would be in town and there'd be like a bare bones band. Musicians would be in town and they'll come and jam after their gig at the forum or whatever. And, you know, go down and play some fucking blues licks or whatever. Uh, so this was born out of that. The guy that does the Camp Freddy, his name is Billy Morrison. He's on vocals here. Um, he's played with the cult and Billy Idol. I think mostly bass player, but on this, he's the lead vocalist. But the other guys on here are Billy Duffy from The Cult, which uh, making a second appearance today. Um, and Ricky Warwick, our old pal Ricky Warwick, is on the on this and wrote co-wrote most of the songs. Matt Storm on drums. Um, so yeah, kind of a kind of a super group, but it's a really great album. It's it's really kind of sunset drippy. Um, but um real high quality stuff unfortunately yeah yeah vamp you're right uh, <laughs> Fucking <thing. laughs> but uh yeah just one of those you know it didn't have any promotion i happened you know i was working in a record store so i happened to see it and listen to it quite a bit um but you know i don't think a lot of people really even know this exists uh <laughs> but yeah it's a good album all the same so circus diablo um with the cult and Guns N' Roses and Ricky Warwick and all those all those guys making some new original music together. Yeah, this is this is like we we're just discussing on the last one. Another one of those albums I've got and own it. I've got it on my list, but I've never got around to listening to it. But I've right. bought, got it for the same reasons as uh, as that Ricky Warwick and all that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, yeah so I have to check cool. it out. I'll have to add it to my long list of stuff to check out. So. Did you did well, you at least hog... heard of it before? <laughs> did you did you hog the music that was playing when you was in that record store? That's what I want to know. Was you was it up to you fucking put the music on? Or oh, you it... mean in the actual store? Yeah. No, 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 oh. no, no. Just albums you took home and you bought. Yeah. Stole. Oh. Yeah, or I bought Stole. or yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I I didn't I didn't hog it. No, you you, you can't play hard rock all day long in a record store you can try <laughs> you can fucking try yeah. <laughs> well you can but i mean i mean even i would I, I don't know 10 hours a day even i would probably get a bit <laughs> bored <laughs> but i'm some fucking jazz for a change jesus christ <laughs> oh god he's back vamp's back yeah, okay i'm going to uh everyone oh. oh shit sorry jam <laughs> 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 confused sorry <coughs> go on, right, jam, right. What you got? that's what i meant i meant um, right going jam that's what i meant yeah. <laughs> okay i'm gonna go to one of um, an album i talked about on our bad songs on good albums oh, this right. was um the brilliantly named satellite party which is Perry Farrell and um, from obviously Jane's Addiction and Nuno Betancourt plays guitar on this album. Yeah. Um, and as I said at the time, the album is brilliant. Even the song I talked about being a bad one, which is the one, the Jim Morrison one at the end, which I won't talk about again. Well, I did like it. It's just it doesn't fit in with the rest of the album. But anyway, this album is fantastic. Love it from start to finish. These actually played download one year, so I did actually get to see these as well. So I've seen Jane's wow. Addiction, I've seen these, and I've seen Pi Porno from Pyro. So I've seen all, all their band. Um, this is the the album's called Ultra Payloaded, and this is the title track, which is Ultra Payloaded Satellite Party, and it's just a really rocking, fast, it's quite a fast song. It's not, not heavy fast, but fast paced, and it's uh, just a good sing-along song. Perry Fowles' uh, lyrics and vocals are just great as usual, and uh, some great guitar playing from Nuno. It's uh, just a part, such a feel-good album. It's really uplifting. If, you, if you've never heard it, just there's something on there for everybody. Um, depends if you're a fan of Jane's Addiction, that sort of stuff. It doesn't really sound like him, but obviously... His vocals 
we're going to remind you of it. So check it out. Ultra Payloaded Satellite Party. Very cool. That's really yeah. great, you know, because I don't I don't know anyone that is enthusiastic about this album. So it's really refreshing to hear someone that just loves it from front to back. Like not even, yeah, oh, it's okay. It just loves it. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. I love that I can stop playing it when I have this album. Yeah, I've played it to death when I got it. I loved it. Which oh, I was wow. yeah, I was thought just gonna be all right. But no, it's good. Great album. What wasn't his wife in the band too? Uh, possibly, yeah. I, I, yeah. Doing some kind of dances on stage and stuff. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eating fire or something. I had something like something that. Like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, there was all that sort of stuff. I remember. It was in the tent. <laughs> yeah. Was it in the old download? The second stage used to be the tent. Now the, sex, the tent is the third stage or fourth stage. Even. But in the old days, the second oh. stage was like the tent. So it was quite a big tent. But uh, yeah, it was in there. So it was uh, pretty good. Right. Cool. Okay. Right. Yeah. Good one, mate. Um, for the next one. I'm going to go to America's favorite rhythm guitarist and their favorite protester, John Schaefer. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Iced Earth, obviously. Um, Order of the Rose. This is the second album that Tim Ripper Owens appeared on and the last one mm. as well. So, John, apart from being obsessed with politics was also and america yes yeah. and america is also obsessed with something wicked this way comes oh yeah, his... <laughs> yeah. <before. laughs> he just can't fucking leave it alone he just can't <laughs> in fact i'm hoping if he makes a comeback after whatever years of being in jail or whatever he's doing he does go back to the evil good versus evil thing rather than the politics because it would probably get him in trouble again. So let's just go back to something wicked this way comes, please, John. Mm. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, this is the eighth album. Order of the Rose is the song. Tim Rip Rowens is amazing on this, although this album was nothing, no way as good as the first album that Tim was on. But it was still mm. a great album. It was a concept album, obviously, something wicked this way comes. It's called Framing, Framing Armageddon something wicked part one that was and when tim rip rowings for some reason got the sack or left or whatever then they got matt barlow back in to do the part two. Oh, okay right. yeah yeah so um anyway it's, it's it's one of these albums that's um filled with little snippets it's a concept album but it's a proper it's about fucking 21 songs on this, on this mm. album. You know, there's oh, little, there's little, like, little, little in-betweeners. Yeah. Bit, but there's some great tracks in between, but it, it, in a way it puts you off. It sort of, do you know what I mean? If you stripped it down and, and you've got 11 tracks, uh, there's yeah. 11 brilliant tracks there, but there's all these little bits. Now, I can understand concept albums, but you don't have to do all that shit, do you? Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's it's there's some great songs in between all those little bits, and Order of the Rose is one of them. Very catchy, but very heavy at the same time. It sort of it almost repeats itself for the three or four minutes as it is, but it's such a catchy song, it sort of grips you a little bit. There's a real chug to it. So very cool song indeed. Order of the Rose, uh, by Iced Earth. There you go. Oh, I didn't right. I didn't mean it, America, about him being your favorite protester. I'm only, <laughs> I'm only joking. Right. Okay. Unsubscribed. <laughs> <laughs> cancelled. You've been cancelled. Cancelled. Yeah. Uh, anyway. All right. Okay. <laughs> Track 11, guys. What you got then, Dom? Okay. So here's one of my favorites that I've mentioned quite a bit, but I really held back. Like, I don't do every album he comes out with just because I like to talk about other people and stuff. But I brought him back here because this is the last album he's done believe it or not in 2007 this is king diamond mm -hmm. the album is called give me your soul please the song's called shapes of black love this song it's so great but yeah can you can you believe it um yeah merciful fate have done stuff though, they? have merciful fate done some stuff no nah. i thought an album came out or is it just a single or something a little while ago no, I mean he's 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 toured with both King Diamond and Merciful Fate over the year since since this. 
he's done tours with both of them, but no, mm-hmm. this is the last album he's done. He did have triple bypass surgery in 2010. So that definitely slowed him down for a while. He announced a new album that he was working on a new album in 2018, but still haven't seen it. Now I just saw that it's delayed again until 2022. Okay. So I don't know if it has something to do with COVID. He wants to be able to tour when it comes mm-hmm. out, all this kind of stuff. I don't know. But th- th- this was a great record. But, I, you know, it's hard to believe that 14 years he hasn't made any new music. Because <laughs> he still seems to be around, you know. Yeah. Or, um, but, yeah. So it's the last we've had of King for a while. But it was a strong album. So um, at least he went out with a, yeah. with a bang, not a whimper. Good to get him in, mate, just in case you don't bring any more music, in case the album never comes. Yeah. I never know. Know. <laughs> it's called, I wrote it down. It's supposed to be called The Institute, um, but fans have been waiting for three years for it, so who knows? Has he bought a song out? Yeah. Has he bought a song out? I'm sure there's been a single. Yeah. I, I think there I've heard has something been as well. one, one song from this album that yeah. the last tour he did, he performed the song live. Oh, okay. So there's probably a video of that, you know, somewhere. Yeah. I thought we did. Yeah, I thought there was something, but I weren't sure if it is now. Usually, you get an album oh, right. quite shortly afterwards, don't you? Usually, mm. yeah. There you go. <laughs> now, such luck with King. Great one, mate. Okay, Jan, what you got, mate? Okay, talking of uh, old crooners, I've got uh, Danzig, um, and this was it was, a, it was a double album called The Lost Tracks of Danzig. So it's all stuff from all over his career, obviously, that wasn't put on any albums, uh, different versions of it, et cetera, et cetera. There's some good stuff on there. There's obviously outtakes. Uh, they're all probably finished songs. They spent quite a lot of time on this. It wasn't a record company sticking it out sort of thing. It was something I he had a lot of input in, and it was a lot of good stuff on there. There's some, some great tracks on there. I've gone for disc one, and that's Come to Silver acoustic version, which is a song from Five, Black as the Devil, which was a very good album. As most people know, it's not very good, very industrial, but this is a laid back uh, Strip back acoustic version of that song, which is a good song anyway. Come to Silver, and it's just a, a reworking of it. It's not been released before, so it can, can go on my list. Um, uh, but there's some good stuff on there. There's a great track called Crawl Across the Killing Floor, I think it's called, um, and one called uh, Skull, something or other. Anyway, there's some good stuff on there. Some good stuff on there to check out. But go for Come to Silver, acoustic version from Danzig. Track Very level. Cool. Is that the last one they done? done Danzig. No, no, he's, he's, he's done. Uh, he's, uh, he's done two albums after this, I think. Fucking hell. At least, yeah, yeah. He did one. He released and album the back. Elvis album, and the Elvis album, which I'm not going to listen to. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that might be the only one I actually want to listen to. Uh, like a bit of Elvis, <laughs> not, not a fan of Elvis. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, good one, mate. I'm a bit of AOR this time. A bit of a collaboration as well. So we got. Um, Fredrickson Denanda album. So oh, don't know. Fred. Fred, Fred Fredrickson is uh, Fergie Fredrickson, who yeah. sang on the Isolation album for Toto way back in '86, I think. So this was the one. I don't know if you remember. I think we was talking about 1986. I remember. And they got rid of the singer. He was like, he was twin. He was singing with the Toto singer. Who I can't remember his name now. Bobby Kimball. Yeah, I think that was him back then. I'm not sure. He's got a good voice as well. But um, they got rid of Fergie because they said he was struggling in the studio to sing the, the tracks. But um, I mean, I don't know about that. He's got a brilliant voice and he sang some really fucking great stuff on that Isolation album. Sounds a bit like Steve Perry. You know, not quite, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit of that Steve Perry. But um yeah, he's great on this. This this whole album's brilliant, actually. Proper AOR stuff. Denanda, I was reading about him. Um, he's a Swedish songwriter, producer, works with a load of people, done a load of stuff with a lot of people. But um, they've just written this album together. Pure AOR. Sounds a bit like Toto, that sort of stuff. A bit survivorish, I suppose. Very, very cool indeed, just for fans of that sort of genre. Jam would love it. Jam would fucking love this album. <laughs> anyway, it's great. Fred, uh, Fergie, another one who passed away, Ferdy, Fred, Fergie Fredrickson, a few years ago now, probably about five, six years ago, I reckon. Mm. But great singer. Absolutely brilliant. A lot of soul in his voice. Just brilliant singer. So there you go. That's my track 11. 
keep a light on. Sorry, I didn't even say the fucking name of it. But this, <laughs> but it is literally that album. I, I wanted to take off of it, and it's we always say, don't we? We can just leave it till last because we know we're going to get a great song off of it. So that was one of yeah. them. And True. you know, near the end of the album, sometimes I struggle on the on the last tracks, the elevens and twelves, and it was an easy pick for me. So there you go. Yeah, keep a light on. But, and, oh, sorry, I didn't even I say the name. Album. I didn't even say the fucking name of the album. What's the matter with me? Baptism by Fire was the album. Oh, Baptism by Fire. And there was yeah. only one album as well by the guys. They didn't collaborate again. I don't think so. There you go. Oh, really? That's a shame. Yeah, but there you go. Vamp likes it, but he likes my beard as well. <laughs> <laughs> We're on track twelve, guys. The last track. All right, last one. Okay. Another one that I've mentioned before, but I purposely leave him off because I don't want to bore anybody to tears with every album that he does every two years. But this was a pretty good one, so I have to put him on. UDO, Udo Dirk Schneider. <laughs> this is uh, the album called Master Cuter. Now, the thing with the thing with UDO is that um, I loved Accept and I loved the first couple albums of UDO, the band. And then I kind of lost him for a while. You know, he went back to Accept in the mid 90s and made three records with them again. And I always thought those weren't great. And then when he came back with the band again, I didn't really, you know, I hadn't heard. He's got so many records, it's hard to keep up. But this one, um, he had a DVD, a, a live DVD of this tour. And I happened to see it and I was just blown away. So I've really followed his career since then. So that's why I had to pick this record because this was kind of where it kind of opened my eyes that he is still making great music and he has a great band behind him. Um, so yeah, UDO, Master Cuter. And I love this song, it's called Crash Bang Crash. And it's a bit <laughs> different for him, it's, it's almost glam metal. It's very, it's, it's a bit lighthearted for him. Uh, which, you know, normally he's really kind of, wah, 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 you know, mm. uh, but this one is, I'm going to crash, bang, crash, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit poppy for him. I mean, it's metal, of course, but, mm. but it's a bit more um, melodic for him. Uh, it's, it's kind of a gas. It's the last song on the album. So uh, there you go. Good old Udio. Yep. And he's here this, cool. well, this year he had a good album out as well. So let's pluck that. Yeah, game over, not bad. Yeah, cool. Okay, Jam, what you got there, mate, for your last one? Okay. Um, I've gone for a, a British band and one that I don't really listen to anymore. I don't, uh, well, I'll, I'll go into that in a minute, but it's Enter Shikari. Enter Shikari. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, from their debut album, Take to the Skies. I mean, I really love this album when it came out. I don't, I didn't know what it was. It didn't sound like anything else because it's sort of metalcore, I guess, but it's got sort of sort of keyboardy bits at the start and then bits of sample electronic stuff, bits and stuff yeah, yeah. It's, it's something a bit different which all them sort of bands were starting to do or the bring me the rise and all them sort of stuff and not really into that and when i found out they were so young i thought i can't really be an old man going to watch these kids jumping around it just doesn't seem right somehow but anyway i really liked the album at the time <laughs> and uh um uh, this song sorry you're not a winner is a really catchy single it's got a great video they were sort of jumping around and uh doing their bits and uh, they, they were quite good i saw them at download as well when they on this debut album so i have seen them as well and uh yes i felt a bit old watching them a bit so uh i haven't really listened to them since i'm not sure if they sound the same anymore i don't really know i haven't followed them at all but uh, this album was really good it's something a bit different if you're not you can early. get away with a download can't you because you could be there yeah, for someone else about, yeah look look old It'd be all right yeah it's all right yeah yeah. All the old ones go there yeah. on Saturdays, don't they? All the yeah. it's all the old bands there on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great choice then, mate. My number 12, I'm going back to some glam. You might like this, Dom. I don't know. The Poodles. Mm. Mm. Um, Poodles, yeah. Poodles. A, song called, a song called Shine from their Sweet Trade album. I think it's their second album. Um, it's basically really catchy, melodic glam metal. I mean, I liked, I really loved their first album. I thought they went a bit off the rails on the next few albums, but there's good tracks, but they're not as good as their first album. Um, mm. But it's still, they still do some good ones, but this is what it's all about, and it good tracks. So the Poodles, Shine, just, just medium paced, great 80s glam, really. That's what it sounds like. So there you go. It's just the oh. end. My, I don't think they're Swedish, actually. Are they uh, Poodles? I thought they were. They probably fucking are. But I could be wrong. They probably are. Everyone else is, isn't they? I think I'm. Yeah. I think I might be. 
<laughs> I'm gonna... You identify as a sweet. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> not not the vegetable either. <laughs> Even though I can, nothing. <laughs> well, nothing could stop me doing that either. Nothing could stop no, me. You can't. True. You can't stop me identifying as a sweet. You know that. I can't. No. No. Good. See, jams wokeness coming out again. That's okay. So. All you don't um, offend turnips. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Guys, it's a great year, 2007. Absolutely brilliant. We um, have you got any um, honourables, Dom? Um, let's see here. I have a couple. What do I got? Um, oh, a very strong Man of War album, but I talk about them a lot. But they had Gods of War this year. Uh, very strong Latter Day Man of War album. A uh, couple of really great tracks on there. Um, Down three. Yes. No one has mentioned down three, which I was surprised at. I mean, it's not as great as maybe as one, and maybe not even two, think, but still. I think, it, I think they went a bit. I don't know if you agree with me on this album. I think they went a bit jammy, a little bit bluesy, mm-hmm. a little bit jammy on it. You know, extended little muck about bits. You know, and I just want them to rock out like they did on that first. They album. got a different strain, man, and yeah, and it made them it made them jam out a bit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, Diamond Head had a decent record called What's in Your Head. Um, Wild Heart self titled record, really good album, but Jesus, talk about Wild Hearts enough. And <laughs> then, um, speaking of cover albums, Tesla had two called Real to Real Volume One and Volume Two. A couple of really great tracks on there. I don't love everything on there, but boy, boy, the the ones that are good, the ones that fit his voice, man, are primo, fantastic Teslas. Um, uh, but I try to avoid covers. Anyway, uh, they're strong, though. Two, two full. I mean, there's like 20 tracks on each one. I must be like... <laughs> yeah, quite a bit mad, yeah. I've seen the yeah. two of them. But, but it's well done. Yeah. Cool. Okay. That's it. Good one, mate. What you got, Jamie? You got anything? Uh, yeah. Um, I really liked um, Chris Cornell's Bomb theme, you know my name, which was from his. He released on his album called Carry On, but it was track fourteen, so obviously I couldn't put that on there. But that was a good song from from Bond. Obviously, the film was released the year before. But uh, um, Foo Fighters, Echo, Silence, Patience, and Grace, some great songs on it. Pretenders on there, um, but couldn't get anything off it. Um, Event Sevenfold self titled album came out, which was all right. Baroness, I haven't talked about Baroness yet. I do like them. Their Red album came out this year, but uh, couldn't get anything off it at the moment. But I'm sure they will feature in the future. Uh, Biffy Clyro's Puzzle album, which is probably the most commercial but also pretty heavy and, and probably their best album but we couldn't get anything off that um halloween gambling with the devil some good stuff on there but once again couldn't fit in megadeth released united abominations which i believe was more like a tony uh, tony uh dave mustaine solo album but they, they they eventually branded it as megadeth so that came out sebastian back did angel down which is pretty good I, I did like that at the time but i haven't heard it for a while so couldn't get anything off it Velvet Revolver did Libertad, not as good as the first album, so didn't bother with that. Volbeat did Volbeat did Rock the Rebel, Meet the Devil, which has some great songs on it. I was surprised I didn't have anything on my list, but it just didn't fall right. And finally, Wasp released Dominator, which was pretty pretty good. Uh, some good stuff on there. And I had the Wild Hearts, but obviously Dom's mentioned them, but I didn't get anything off that either. So. There we go. I'm trying to see if there's anything that you guys haven't mentioned. Um, Saxon. Mm-hmm. Oh. You like, them do, you like them do, Van? Uh, the Inner Sanctum, yeah. So I think at this top, top point, well, I've said this before, they went into this sort of heavier mode, didn't they, at this point, where they were sounding very sort of, I don't know, a bit like fire, wind, that sort of heavy metal, metal sort of like, you know, stepping it up a little bit, a bit more, more I modern. Had a, I actually had a track from this on my skeleton list, but I decided to go with something that I haven't talked about before, but, <laughs> but <laughs> still great, a good record. Really, really solid album. You're obviously still bringing stuff out. Um, no, I think, guys, I think, I mean, there's some others that, but, it's, it's, you know, we sort of touched upon the main ones with it. It's cool. But no, good. Great list Excellent. again, guys. Absolutely brilliant. 2007. So I don't know, um, just to let, I'm actually going to surprise you with this one, guys. I don't know if we're going to, I'm not sure if we're going to do an all killer before Christmas because we've got to round up the year, if you like, sort of summarize the year a little bit. So, yeah. So I think, you know, I'm not saying we won't, but there's quite a bit to do to 
for myself and getting you guys involved, hopefully, to do some summarising of 2021. So, because it was a great year for music. Yeah. So, um, yeah, whether we will do this next week or whether it'll be the first thing in the new year, I don't know yet, but we'll talk about that offline. See you next but, year. <laughs> but I'm sure, we'll see, year. We're sure we'll see you, your ugly faces before Christmas, won't we? <laughs> yep. Yeah, good. Are you good. talking to your audience? That's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Look, thanks for joining me, guys, as usual. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Some great um, music, 2007. So see you next time, guys. Soon. All right. <laughs>